Yes guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another episode of 5 Things We Learn. In this video, we're going to delve into 5 key talking points from the Krasnodar Chelsea match. And we're going to see how that bears into the next Chelsea match against Burnley as well. But before we start this video, you already know if you guys haven't done so already, please just press those two buttons. I'm going to always keep pestering you to press if you haven't already done. That like button, that subscribe button, two buttons and that's just going to help me get that little bit closer to 20k and I need every little bit of help I can get right now. So if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like and subscribe button and if you're feeling happy and you want to help me out a little bit more, press that bell notification button as well too to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. And yeah, let's go straight into five things we learn. First thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Frank Lampard because I'll be real, I think I've been very honest when it comes to Frank Lampard. I've been willing to criticise him whenever I think he's deserved criticism and I've also been willing to praise him whenever I feel like he's deserved praise. And honestly, just for actually showing good game management and making game-changing subs, which is something that we've lacked in about the last four or five games, first talking point. Frank Lampard showed great game management in that game against Krasnodar. Did want to see it a little bit earlier, but that's just me nitpicking. Realistically, I didn't expect that we were actually going to make any sort of key changes. And then we just turned the game completely on its head in about 70, 80 minutes in. First half was a drag. Second half as well for long periods is a massive up. I'll say it's a drag in the way we were playing. If you're a Krasnodar fan, even at 4-0 down, I think you're coming out of this game happy with the way that Krasnodar took the game to Chelsea. It was a very even game for long periods and Krasnodar were not just willing to sit back and try and absorb pressure all game. No, they were trying to apply pressure on us as well. And we were getting worked for long periods of that match. They were counter-attacking us. Not at pace, I think that's probably the one thing that did hold them hold them back in this game, was that we were the much fitter team than them, and I do think that also came into play towards the end of the game, seeing as that's how we managed to pull, up, pull away from them and get the three goals to kill off the match. But Krasnodar were a very good team against us, they defended in a good solid shape, they were smart when they were on the ball, they were able to find ways around the team. Had a couple decent shots at Edouard Mendy as well, but we're going to delve into Edouard Mendy as well later on. But we did need to change something. We were stagnant at, as hell for so long in that match. The two pivots of, jo of Jorginho and Kovacic, we'd been, which we'd been calling for for ages, was just poor. It was slow. There was barely any passes being made. Runs weren't being tracked by the DMs, which I can't lie, that's Jorginho's bread and butter. He really should be doing better in those sorts of situations. But we just weren't applying pressure on Krasnodar. I thought Kai Havertz did well in phases. I thought Hakim Ziyech was balling out the whole match. But other than that, no one was really applying themselves. And for Krasnodar, it was again an easy for an opposition team to get possession back from us as soon as we regained it. Because we just didn't really try to do much with it. I think Zuma and Rudiger must have been the most regular passing duo between the pair of them. Because it was just sideways between the pair of them for most of the first half. But Frank Lampard, like we said, showed good game management to finally change it up and we went for the 4-3-3 in midfield. Kante at the base in the DM role and Kai Havertz and Mason Mount playing as the two attacking eights. And those two, they looked at completely different animals when we played them in that position. Mason Mount, I've already said for the longest time, he is not a poor player. He is not that he is not Chelsea standard. The problem with Mason Mount over the last few games was that he was being played out of position and that he was being overplayed and that was having a impact on his performances and as well him being played out of position so frequently was just putting a spotlight on him because his bad performances were just being highlighted too much by Chelsea fans as a number eight as a number 10 he is a quality player and there's a reason why Frank Lampard started him because his energy is just unmatched we were barely pressing them if we're going to be honest about it Mateo Kovac the best thing he did in that match was just be calm under pressure and be able to release the ball back to someone else who was out of pressure so he could continue play. But he didn't really do anything progressive and it was the same thing as Jorginho, there was nothing progressive. As soon as we changed to free midfield, Kai Havertz, acres of space whenever he had the ball and when he's driving down that when he's driving down the pitch beating two or three players he is at his peak in that sort of role mason mount as well very exciting seeing the two of them together and already i'm thinking we should probably be ditching 4-2-3-1 maybe that's the 
been the problem all along because we've had the Kova and Kante pivot and it hasn't worked. We've had the Kante and Jorginho pivot and it hasn't worked. Now we've had the Jorginho and Kovacic pivot that still hasn't worked. You know what? It is just a system. I think we should be going for 4-3-3 against, Manche against Burnley. Why did I say Man City? I don't know. Hell, if anything, that could be my second point. If you want to add that, we'll make it a six, six things we learn. But please, play the 4-3-3 on Saturday. It's something different. I think Burnley might be anticipating it now because they probably would have seen our last game going into the Burnley match. But regardless, please play the 4-3-3 because we've seen so many times now the 4-2-3-1 just doesn't work. Number two, Hakim Ziyech. And we were just waiting for this guy to get back to full fitness. And he already looks like a demon. The Moroccan magician was on fire yesterday against Krasadar. I'm going to roll through his stats a little bit just for you now. 35 out of 40 completed passes and 87% passing at passing accuracy. Four shots on target with one chance created, seven recoveries, one key pass and five out of five accurate long balls. Bro, before we switched to 4-3-3, our only real source of creativity was coming from Hakim Ziyech. Krasadar was struggling to get the ball off him. His range of pass was amazing. He was brilliant and he fully deserved the goal to wrap up his game as well. I think he got an assist as well just to wrap up the match. And yeah, him playing on the right-hand side, the one thing I was worried about was if him and Kai Havertz would start occupying the same space as like similar to the issue that we were potentially going to have with Christian Pulisic and Timo Werner. But they linked up very well. For the hudson Doy goal, there was great link-up play between Ziyech and Kai Havertz in the build-up to that. And them two are linking up excellently. The two best player, best outfield players on the pitch by a mile were Kai Havertz and Hakim Ziyech. And they both had amazing performances. And it does look like Hakim Ziyech is now back to full fitness. Which means we'll definitely see him make his first Premier League start against Burnley on Saturday. And it's a good game for him as well. I think it'll be the same sort of team where Burnley are going to try, try and attack us in some phases. But the most part, they're going to play a defensive brand of football. They've also been struggling to get goals as well. I think they've got the lowest goals in in the Premier League this season, joint with Sheffield United. Someone correct me in the comments section if I'm wrong. But it's going to be a game with tight spaces, and Hakim Ziyech does brilliantly in those tight spaces, and he is going to be finding players all game. So I'm very excited to see what Hakim Ziyech has in store for the Premier League. Defenders are not ready. Third talking point, three clean sheets in a row. Guys, when did we ever think we were going to speak about that? The one thing, the one consistent period we've had in what has been a massively inconsistent season is Edouard Mendy. Four clean sheets in his last four games. Three clean sheets in Chelsea's last three games. And he's been the guy between the sticks all season. This is the exact example as to why Kepa Tax is real. I told you so many times that I wasn't over-exaggerating when I said this. Last season, we would not have been in a top four race with a competent goalkeeper. A goalkeeper that would actually give the defenders confidence. We did not have that last season. We had a keeper with the worst save percentage in Premier League history. I think the fourth worst save percentage in, the, in all of Europe. And of course that was going to hold us back. We now have a competent goalkeeper between the sticks. And he's saving us points. He saved us points against Krasnodar before we switched to 4-3-3. When they were counter-attacking us, they had a couple of very decent chances. Another, a couple of them as well, they really had to stretch to make saves for. And you know what I'm going to tell you? If Edouard Mendy had to stretch to save that shot, Kepa is not saving that shot. And that is not disrespect. That is just a matter of fact. And I'm sure that we all already know that. He kept us in the game yet again. It was another amazing performance from him. I'm just highlighting the fact that we kept free clean sheets i think the defense was also solid as well compared to the way it's been at the start of the season but when you've got a goalkeeper that you actually can trust it, it instills more of a sense of belief in yourself and it makes you less worried because i've always said defending is a lot harder than attacking attacking you can miss a chance you could lose the ball you'll get another chance defending if you make a mistake it's probably going to be a goal which is why those defenders were probably shook the whole time last season because they know as soon as they make a save as soon as they make a mistake, Tyrannosaurus Kepper is going to make another mistake and it's going to be 1-0 to the opposition. But third point, three clean sheets in a row, gas mode. Point number four, we're going to go into Callum Hudson-Odoi. And yeah, he did get a goal. And I hope that does really, I hope that does a lot for his confidence. But I still don't think he had an amazing performance. And I do think he needs to start impressing more of the chances that he takes because this is another game where I'm looking at like, 
bit of a chance wasted to put an impression on the team. It feels like the Barnsley match where we were in another case of trying to push for Hudson Adoy to get chances, to get the game time that he deserves because we've been playing Mason Mount on the wing for, for the longest and that wasn't working. We played him in that match against Barnsley, didn't look that impressive in this game. This game looked the same thing as well, he did get the goal but it was a massive goalkeeping error. I mean if we take bias out of the situation, any other goalkeeper except for Kepa maybe Willie as well. Any other goalkeeper makes a save, if we're being real about it. Other than that, if you look at the way that he played, decision making was all over the place. I thought his passing wasn't really that progressive either. It was just pass to Chilwell and see if he can do something. And yeah, he didn't really impress me too much. I can't lie. Let me know if you disagree with me down in the comment section, but I don't think he had that good of a game. And I think for someone who hasn't had a lot of game time, who has been complaining about it as well. Bro, we really need to start seeing more from Hudson Odoi because he's not having the impact that we want to see from him. Final points I want to make, and we're going to talk about Jorginho's penalty because I saw so many people moaning about it in my live stream yesterday. Guys, please stop complaining about Jorginho's technique. You already know what Jorginho's technique is going to be. You already know exactly what he's going to do when he's going to step up to take the penalty. Why are you moaning about it? The only two goalkeepers that have saved is Edison and Allison. Two goalkeepers that are at a very top level and can read players very well. So, you know what? The standard's very high when it comes to Jorginho's penalties. And when it comes to his penalty taking accuracy, he's scored most of them. He's only missed a lot. He's only missed three for us, and it's not the last three either. I think when it comes to Jorginho's penalty technique, you know he's going to do that hop. I think when it came to the penalty yesterday, it was just bad luck. If you hit that an inch to the right, it's going in. You can't really account for it licking off the goalkeeper's arse straight after that either. It's just an unlucky penalty. I don't know why people are moaning about it. Timo Werner took a great penalty. I'm not going to discredit him or anything like that. That was a great penalty from him as well. If you want to switch penalty takers, fine. Like, I don't really care too much about it. They're both competent penalty takers. But let's not act like Jorginho is washed or anything like that. Or his penalty technique is poor. Or it's costing us games. Because it's not. It's a good technique. It's worked out for the most part. It Only the best of goalkeepers have been able to read it. So please, please, just relax on the Jorginho penalty BS. But yeah, this is the end of five things we learned from Krasadar, nil, Chelsea, four. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my comments down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care. Up the chill.